This is the Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of the Pit Stop, where we are here to talk about sim racing and everything that is going on in the wonderful world of sim racing. All sorts of great things from hardware to software to racing we will be covering today's show, and we will try to blow through the stories as fast as possible to get you on with your weekend, because it's Friday. Happy Friday. I hope you have a great weekend planned. I have some great re racing. We're kicking off our uh, GT series this week, so I'm very excited about that on Sunday. So uh, uh, what else do I want to cover before I, I before we even get to the stories, everything that we talk about, I will have a link in the description of the show. So as I blow through these news stories today telling you what's going on, if there's something that you want to get more detail, if there's more information, you want to read the full story, see the full video, I will have a link to everything we talk about right there in the description. So what is going on in sim racing? And unfortunately, we do start on a somber note. Uh, yesterday, we learned the passing of William Marsh, Sim Racing Paddock. Uh, William, a, a wonderful, great man. Uh, uh, I've known William for well over a decade, and uh, he is one of those really genuinely nice people. Uh, not a bad bone in his body. Not, you know, he's just a really nice, good, genuine person. Unfortunately, he passed away last week on March 22nd. And that leaves the sim racing community um, mourning and at a loss. Uh, one of the great streamers, one of the great content providers, one of the great advocates of sim racing, William Marsh. So rest in peace, William. I, I did a tribute video that came out yesterday. Um, many, many Boosted Media did a video. Many, many streamers, uh, you know, almost every company acknowledged uh, the passing of Will. He was that important to the community. So, like I said, it's a it's a big loss for sim racing. And, uh, um, yeah, so so be well, William, and uh, the best to your family in, in dealing with this tough time. So, uh, sorry to start the show on that, but, it, you know, I, I, you know, we should, we should actually take a moment for William Marsh. Again, very important, legendary character in sim racing. All right, getting back to uh, the story, starting off with the iRacing camp. The Formula V is coming to iRacing. The Formula V, okay, so this is one of those cars I think that some people are going to roll their eyes and be like, why on earth? Why? The Formula V, based on the pre-1963 Volkswagen Beetle. That's right, that's, that's the basis of where this car started. Um, shares parts with to make it a very affordable race car back in the day. Uh, but it continues on, what, 40, 50 years later, they're still racing Formula V. Very popular. The reason this is an important car, so before you roll your eyes and wonder why do we need another tiny junior rookie level vehicle, here's why. Almost everybody in road racing at some point in time has touched upon, driven, a Formula V. It's that, it's one of those ladder cars that, you know, chances are at some point, oh, we got a few new subs. Thank you, Sob Jock, for joining the show, joining the uh, team. Thank you very much for that. Uh, wow, another one, Juan Abdul Hadi. Thank you for subscribing as well. I appreciate that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the Formula V is a very important car. Vladimir, this must be catching up. Tachenko, thank you for subbing as well. But, yeah, we, we are... It is just lighting up. Toe King subscribing. I think this is... Anyway, okay. Sorry for the distraction of the subs catching up from uh, yesterday's toll, I guess. Anyway, the Formula V is a very important car. No, it will not be fast. No, it does not have downforce. I believe it doesn't even run that high-performance attire. Um, some would say, how is this that much different than the Skippy. Uh, you know what? It's even less than the Skippy, I think. I think it's less horsepower, even smaller. Um, but again, a iconic race car, an important race car. Is it needed in some racing? You tell me. You tell me your thoughts on that. I want to hear from you. I'll be looking at the comments during this show. All right, looking uh, at the, some of the pro series out there. Sage Karam is back in the winner's circle in the IndyCar iRacing Challenge from Homestead. We talked about that race going on. I didn't get a chance to win it, but Sage Karam wins. Connor Daly finishing in second, and Enzo Fittipaldi 
finishing in third, and there's a shot of, I believe, that Sage's car there. Anyway, uh, so you had that going on. Nope, there's Sage's car, the 98 or 93, all black. Um, number 20, that was Connor Daly right there. And then the third place, let's see, is this Enzo Fittipaldi? Yep, that's Enzo Fittipaldi in the purple car with that giant canopy above the head. I didn't think it looked that big and square, except for this head-on shot. I thought it looked a little more like that, a little more arrow. Interesting. Never kind of saw that angle. It wasn't my favorite angle. Uh, Josh Rogers extends his Porsche Tag Heuer eSports Super Cup point lead with the Nürburgring feature win. So Josh back in winner's circle over Dio Diogo Pinto and Tommy Ostgard finishing in third. Josh Rogers with a monster lead at this point. 515 points over Mitchell DeJong in three with 388 and Sebastian Job with 367. So a good battle for second place between Mitchell and Sebastian, but Josh Rogers kind of running away with things in the Porsche. We'll see what they do with this series next season. I mean, I'm I'm still wondering what they're gonna do. I've heard rumors. I've heard rumors there's gonna be two championships, a road and like an open wheel, but maybe it's all gonna be converted to the new open wheel. I don't know. Uh, perfect Strategy propels Bryant to his first career eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series win at Auto Club, a.k.a. California Speedway. That's where me and the uh, Sim Pit Trucks guys will be running next week. Next Thursday night, we'll be running race number two. Bob Bryant won the race. Derek Justice in second and Isaac Gann in third. And our points are Kagan Leahy, Leahy st still winning with 140 leading. Casey Kerwin in second with 127 and Logan Clamp at one point behind uh, with 126. Conti, Guest are 25-24, so one point behind third, fourth, and fifth. One point separating those. Uh, wow, where's my disclaimer? Where's my disclaimer? All right, Piatari Pokella and Dominic Hoffman won the top split of the 2021 iRacing Sebring 12-hour race. That was this previous weekend. Uh, one of the most iconic, one of the most important online endurance races of the year, the Sebring 12 hour. Uh, Simpit entered three teams. I was not able to race. I actually had an injury. I had a sim racing injury and couldn't race. Uh, but these guys are Team Redline. Uh, Piatari, Pokella, and Dominic Hoffman winning the top split. And uh, you know, we, I don't know the exact strength of field, but the top split in the iRacing endurance is usually up in the 6,000 point range. So winning that is no joke. Team Redline finishing 1-2 in the Delara P217 class. And notice how uh, they only talk about the prototype win. I That's one thing that's always bothered me about mixed class racing is they act like these guys won at some exceptional level beyond the top winners. I'll give them credit. Team Redline, <laughs> again, winning the BMW GTE class and BS Turner in second with Williams Esport in third, that being in the GTE class. Uh, by the way, Yaz Heat Microsoft finished third in the Delara. This is all top split results. Uh, and then when we look down to the GT3 or GTD class, they're calling it, Looks like BS Competition and the BMW taking first spot. Uh, Biela Racing Team in second with the Lamborghini. And R8G Esport number 10 finishing in third. Anyway, uh, looking to the Sim Pit teams. Uh, the first team, the Sim Pit uh, <laughs> Team Red. Sim Pit Team Red which was Kenneth Eastep, Phil Scrud, and Daniel Card. They actually had a rough day. They were doing great. They were up into the top three in their group, I believe. And then inevitably, this is what happened. You can see the black smoke coming out of the car. And an unfortunate day for Ken, Phil, and Dan. As you see, that Simpit BMW has had better days. Now, uh, Sim Simpit Team Orange. They, on the other hand, it running a 19th split, had a wonderful day, a stellar day. James Dowling... Moses Choi and Sam Hinchy went on to win their split, winning, putting the Simpit BMW on top of the winner's circle. Congratulations to those guys. And then finally, Simpit Team Blue, which was Amir Asad, Ola Sarnkis, and Terry Crouch, they finished third. So two of the three Simpit teams finishing on the podium in one of the biggest races of the year at iRacing. So thank you, Amir, 
Ola, Terry, uh, Ken, Phil, Dan, James, Moses, and Sam. Thank you so much for representing the Sim Pit and doing such a great job out there. There's a close-up shot of that Formula V in case you missed it. Look at that super complex steering rack. <laughs> All right, R Factor. Whoop, I should scroll up. I, that's my screenshot of the day. That's why you're scrolled down. Uh, new news out of R Factor. So, certainly no slowing them down just because of the acquisition by uh, Motorsport. But uh, release track updates Indianapolis, Portland, and Silverstone, plus GTE liveries. This was posted on the 1st of April. No joke. Uh, there's some uh, Silverstone, it's at the workshop. Uh, Portland, so some fixes for three of their big tracks and some liveries for the GTEs. So BMW livery, livery that Eau Rouge livery we just saw up there. Uh, looks like it was Eau Rouge across all of the cars was the big update. Eau Rouge. And then beyond that, they had another roadmap update back on the 31st. That happened since. So fixes and things that are still going on under the hood. Look at this checklist of things being updated to R-Factor. Um, really big update, it looks like. Yeah, absolutely. So these guys are really working hard. Uh, Kart Sim, massive update as well. So great stuff there. Uh, Codemasters enters a junior WRC championship with launch of Dirt Rally Team. Codemasters today brings dirt to life with the launch of the Codemasters Dirt Rally Team. Comprising of John Armstrong, no surprise, and code driver Phil Hall, the duo will make their debut appearance this April in the 2021 Junior WRC Championship. Junior WRC season starts in Croatia before heading to Portugal, Estonia, Belgium, and Spain. Additional support comes from Thrustmaster and the Royal Air Force for the 2021 season. Let me play a little sound of this. So this is uh, this is awesome. Real life. Be great exposure for Dirt Rally, for Codemasters, Thrustmaster, all those teams associated with it. So congratulations to them. All right, what else do we have today? Uh, Formula One Challenger Series. This is the group trying to make a name for themselves to make it into the draft for the 2022 season, I guess it would be. Alicio Di Capua. Let's get that disclaimer ready. Uh, leading the points with 135 over Josh Idau with 100 points, and Nicholas Mateo. So look at those three names. Those could be three names that we're going to be seeing and hearing pr pronounced properly in the Big Boy series next season. You never know. Uh, Rita had a big, big update. They also, you can see uh, Race Department, Rita Studios, uh, everybody uh, mourning the loss of William Marsh. Rita Studios today is the first an anniversary since AMS2, original early access release on Steam. So... First standard, one year. One year, you guys. To mark the occasion, they have a big new update and some exciting free content and a fresh batch of, batch of fixes and improvements. So, Automobilista with some big things out of them in honor of one year. One year since Automobilista 2 came to us. Uh, new content added the F Retro Gen 2 series featuring the Lotus 79. We're looking at there in the generic F Retro Gen 2 model. Added more Jaker... Uh, Paugua historical layouts some updates big update list from them as well so R Factor and Automobilista both seeing some big updates recently uh, now this would have been more applicable yesterday than today because this is a joke right this is a April Fool's joke am I wrong did I race? Uh, I racing. Did Fanatic really? I, I Fanatic did not make a three hundred and fifty dollar mini direct drive, did they? Um, am I wrong? I think this is a joke. I have not heard yet. They say they're selling it for three hundred and forty nine ninety five, and it's from your Tombot with more details. Now, this combines the latest technology to low cost, something we could only achieve by producing it completely with robots and selling it with chatbots. Even this text was generated by our new blog bot. So I'm not sure if you can see. And while we were at it, we even integrated a super innovative flux barrier technology. It can really explain what it does, but it's sensationally good. Obviously, this is a joke, you guys. However, is it a joke? 
I wondered for a while. The podium is gigantic, and it is very expensive, and it is monster horsepower. I, for a long time, have wondered, when are they going to build exactly this? They're calling it the DD half, 0.5. Um, no BS. I think this is a wheel that might get made. I don't, th I don't think this is all joke. I think this might be a joke of something in the future. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Also, Fanatic showing off their, their, this is cool. The smallest details make the difference. Make your Fanatic steering wheel unique with the fully customizable button caps and sticker set. This is one of the reasons I love my Rick Motec button boxes, because they come with stickers instead of me having to make labels or sticky notes. It comes with proper stickers to put on my, on my button box. Fanatec, Fanatic have done the same thing. Uh, button caps and sticker set. So you can see different colors if you want to change the caps, different automotive type uh brand uh markings that you would want on your wheel so you know what each button does anyway i thought that was kind of nice available for 29.95 all right euro truck they've got an update here for uh renault trucks it's evolution time we get it we don't get to see anything it's all tease it's all tease look at this tease 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 me renault look at the, the new renault truck sitting there under wraps we don't get to see it no we do not get to see it just yet yes it's currently hidden under the red cover but that will change very soon let's show our friends over at renault trucks how excited we all are just take a screenshot of the new vehicle under the red cover and post on twitter instagram facebook with the hashtag renault trucks evolution is coming there there you go uh randomly pick five lucky winners who will receive a special gift selected from renault trucks merchandise range that's cool. I'd like a Renault truck stuff. All right, what else? Uh, Forza looks like there's an update. Forza Horizon 4 teases two new cars ahead of the Series 34 update. Goes live on April 1st. That would have been yesterday. And da, 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 but they talk about knowing what it's going to bring. The only There's only two in the latest teaser, a 68 Firebird. And a Camaro. Uh, nope, shared deployment. The only two. The latter is more obvious than two. 68 fire. Wow. Oh, a 68 and a 78 Firebird, aka, isn't that the Bandit? Isn't that the Bandit? 6.6 .6 liter V8, 345 horsepower. I uh, believe so. Uh, these were cars from the Forza Motorsport for American Muscle Pack. Anyway, uh, anyway, so new cars. Uh, the Burn Rubber Bundle available on Humble. If you're looking for entertainment over the weekend, check this. Pay more than, uh, more than the average of ten uh, with Dirt Rally Grip and Racer Pacer. I'm sorry. Pay twelve dollars to also unlock a seto with all of the packs. Uh, Kart Craft. Monster Truck Championship NASCAR Heat, including the car pack. So some good deals on some racing games going on at Humble Bumble. Humble Bumble. Bundle Bumble. NASCAR and F1 are coming to Rocket League Season 3. What? Rocket League's High Octane Season 3 will drop for free on April 7th. So just a few days, four days, five days away. Players, set your start your engines. Rocket League Season 3 is fueled up and ready to go on April 7th. Developer Pi Sonic. Teases in the description of the new video on YouTube. Get ready for the most high-octane season yet, featuring a new Rocket Pass. Challenges and content from NASCAR and Formula One coming in May. I thought it said April 7th, and it said coming in May. Formula One coming in May. Maybe we get NASCAR now on Formula One in May. This doesn't look like Rocket League, though. Isn't Rocket League supposed to be knocking soccer balls around i'm very confused there we go that's the rocket league i know interesting okay interesting what else do we have going on aussie iRacing player finishes second in debut real life racing this is a, a something that was going on with evolution racing team and and a, and a competition and an award and uh put you in a seat 
thing. Aaron Lee and Ethan Grig Galt, the inaugural members of the Evolution Racing Team, are experienced iRacing sim racers. Grig Galt was one of 12 players who competed in the Gfinity Supercar Series in 2019, and Lee was racing professionally in iRacing through 2020. But over the weekend, the duo took the real-life track for ERT, a Logitech-sponsored team that predominantly keep, competes online. Um, anyway, while e racer Ethan Gig came in eighth in real-life Hyundai Excel race, Aaron Lee nabbed an impressive second place in the Formula V. Look, see, that's a modern Formula V, by the way. So when we were talking Formula V way back when about the uh, iRacing, here you go. Amateur racing, Formula V in action. Uh, let's see here. That's Aaron Lee right there. And I'll have a picture of the other. Yeah, well, he, he finished second, so that's Aaron Lee. Anyway, congratulations to those guys, and, and congratulations to Evolution Racing Team on, on everything that they're doing there. That's really cool. Our favorite mobile racer, IGP Manager, is now in 3D. Um, this is a great update, a big deal, changing it to, you know, uh, from a total top-down view it's now a 3d view and this will probably make it the kind of difference that graphically will change whether some people are even interested in the title or not to be honest with you so um yeah anyway um i've tr i was it igp yeah it was igp that i used to play i used to have a lot of fun with that uh wreckfest ps5 upgrade costs 10 bucks but the xbox series x upgrade is free uh, so there is a paid upgrade for Wreckfest and a free upgrade for Xbox version of Wreckfest. And are we doing Wreckfest tomorrow? We might have Wreckfest going... Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I did not want that to happen. There we go. Uh, we might be playing Wreckfest tomorrow. Uh, if you want to play Wreckfest with me and the guys, I can't guarantee it's tomorrow. What is going on with my computer? What the F? Why does it keep popping to full screen? I'm not pressing any buttons. Um, sorry about that, you guys. Okay, we're almost done here. Just a few more things to tell you about, and then we'll get on with the weekend. So uh, if you want to join us for Wreckfest anytime or any other gaming we do, just type in exclamation mark Discord, and it'll show you where, give you a link to the SimPit Discord channel where you can come in and talk to the guys and see what we're planning for this weekend and other events. Uh, I'm not going to go into this article. Uh, this article is at CNET. You can find the link in the description of the show here, but it was just something I want to reflect on. Oculus Rift, five years. Things are a lot different now. You realize it's already been five years? Five years since Oculus Rift was officially available to everybody. Um, there have been a lot of changes. The units have gotten better. The games and the technology have getting, gotten better. I personally would have, I think I would have liked to have seen a little more advancement between now and then. Uh, iRacing put out their iRacing broadcasting policy. If you're a streamer or a broadcaster, you might want to double check this. Uh, this is available in their form and I'll have a link to it here. You'll need to be an iRacing member, I believe, to get the link. It will be in the description, but effectively February, February, these are the official rules. Like, I mean, theoretically, if you broke these rules, I believe iRacing could rightfully take down your broadcast. There's also a difference here when you read the article or look at it, and, and if you think about it, there is a difference between broadcasting and streaming. If you're just streaming your racing, there's certain rules that apply. But if you're broadcasting, there are other rules that apply. So you might want to check that out. A lot of you guys stream. A lot of you guys do broadcast races. Might want to double check things. And then lastly, let's just check out some cool stuff. This is posted by One Free Hug. Mercedes W08 steering wheel completed. Nice looking wheel that he, he built. Excuse me, I got some hiccups all of a sudden. Excuse me. Uh-oh. Uh oh, we got to get this show to a, to an end before we embarrass ourselves. Nice looking wheel there from uh, One Free Hug. I'm just starting to really enjoy seeing what people are doing, building their own equipment, and just shows you how much sim racing has changed. How many people are building really nice high end stuff for themselves, let alone whether they're going to sell it to you or anyone else. Anyway, a true death mobile posted by Plenty Reach. These are all on Reddit. New version of the rig. I want to know what this seat is. That is the cheapest seat I've ever seen. Um, I know the dune buggy seat you can get from Summit. It is bigger than this. Very cheap. This looks to be even cheaper. So I want to know what that seat is. If you have, please put it in the chat so I can try to find one or find out what they cost. 
And this is something that just made me mad. Not for this guy. This was posted by Matthew Arthur. Wife got him a cup holder for his for his rig for his birthday. It's the best upgrade to the rig so far. Why have I not done this yet? Why do I not have a cup? Now, you know me well enough. I need a mug holder. But why don't I have my sim racing mug and my sim racing mug holder on my rig? How can I have been a sim racer for 30 plus years and still not have a cup holder on my rig? I just don't know. Uh, this one, you know I'm a sucker when you get your animal in the photo. So I just love when seeing because my dog is right here. Hi, Max. What's up, buddy? You're just going to lay there? You don't care? All right. Fair enough. Uh, Speed One Biscuit. Speed One Scoot. I'm sorry. My racing... Man, my racer in training is having trouble reaching the shifter. Aw. Is that a French bulldog? I think that's a Frenchie. Let me know if you know your dog breeds. Is that a Frenchie? And then finally, this one, this is the this is where we're going to close today's show out, other than me just telling you what's going on this weekend. Uh, stolen from Facebook. Hit a little too close from home. It was on sale. Anyway, uh, Adam R46 claims that this was his rig pre-COVID and post-COVID. How many of you have taken advantage of COVID as the excuse or opportunity to upgrade your rigs? I think it has been the biggest year ever when it comes to rig upgrades. It's not just the guys coming in, uh, but it is also the upgrades. Uh, one note that I'll say, and just a little recommend, man, don't race barefoot. That's gross. <laughs> anyway, all right. I don't have any graphics to show it, but uh, Sunday, 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 Sunday. Sunday is the kickoff of the Simpit GT3 series, and we're going to be at Daytona. I'll be in the BMW. I'm very excited to kick off this season. I've already put in a little more work for this coming race than I did for any races last season. I don't know if it'll pay off. Daytona's a little funny. Um, I'm also going to try to get back to doing some Attack the Track videos. I'm a little behind. It's been a tough week. Uh, also, we have our Next Level Racing Traction Platform Plus video is actually in editing and should be coming out by the end of the weekend. So lots going on here, lots of racing going on. And of course, if you want to come hang out with the crew, you want to get out there with some uh, rec fest or random racing or whatever, find out about our GT3 series, just uh, type in exclamation mark Discord and it'll give you a link to our Discord channel. You can kind of come in and find out what everybody's doing over the weekend. Anyway, that is my plan. That's what's going on and that's what's going on in Sim Racing. I hope you have a great, great weekend. Get out there, do some Sim Racing. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.